session on time. So hopefully you all brought your own breakfast. Uh, welcome to uh, the virtual version of the Saratoga County um, breakfast, uh, where we listen to and, and learn about what's happening with our county, with county leaders. Um, I'm really thrilled, honored uh, to have both Chairman Kuzniers with us, uh, another Todd uh, to join us, and the county administrator, Steve Bulger. Uh, they'll talk in a little bit. Uh, but I want to kick this over to Skip Carlson, the chair of the uh, Chamber's Board this year, to say a few words. Skip. Well, thank you, Todd. And I do sincerely appreciate uh, our featured guest today and also want to welcome Assemblyman, Assemblywoman Warner to, uh, to the Zoom. But uh, the couple things I want to say is uh, the first thing uh, is a kind of a personal thing. I want to thank the uh, the Board of Supervisors, they, um, I went down there and spoke to one of their committees and they were extremely uh, cooperative and got things done quickly and they wrote a resolution and we got extended hours starting on April 5th. I can't thank you enough. Uh, that means a lot to us and uh, I'm sure that was part of it. Uh, as many times as we can get people pulling in the same direction, it really helps. Uh, the second thing, uh, and then I'll let you guys get started. So I have one little thing that I would like you, you, uh, you know, Todd and Steve to cover today. Um, I know a lot of people have probably been asking you what you can do for them. So I was, I was just wondering, you know, maybe you could ask uh, us, how can we help you as a chamber, as individual companies, what can we do to make your job easier? Um, I, I know one of the things that I've really tried to be, it's very easy to be critical through this whole process. And, and, I, and I've tried really hard not to be critical when things don't go our way. But I would like you to maybe just give us one or two things that we can do to help make your job easier, because I know it's not easy. But uh, anyway, uh, good morning to everyone. I will get out of the way. I know you've got a busy agenda today. And uh, again, thanks, everyone. We got a huge crowd today. So go to it. Thanks, Skip. Um, we also uh, want to thank the Adirondack Trust Company, the sponsor for today's virtual breakfast. Ellen, are you with us? Did you want to say a couple words? Is she there, Andrea? Nope. Okay. All right. Well, thanks to them. And you, as you can see behind Andrea, she's got the Adirondack Trust uh, logo there. And uh, again, you know, you can't run programs like this. We can't survive as a chamber like this without some tremendous support. And the Adirondack Trust Company has certainly uh, been doing that for years, uh, decades. Uh, so I just wanna briefly state, you know, for from the chamber's perspective, Skip mentioned this, the state of the chamber is excellent. We, we had just unbelievable, tremendous support uh, over the course of the last year. Uh, you know, we, we really had no idea when, when the pandemic hit last March, what might happen to Chamber membership and investments in the in the organization, they they were higher than they've been in years. Uh, we certainly took a hit on uh, event revenue, uh, but the support we had from the business community was really overwhelming. And so, to all of you out there that uh, stayed with us, that helped us, um, we want to we want to thank you this morning. You know, now that's given us the opportunity. Again, we're a partner with the county as their tourism promotion agency. We're gearing up for. Uh, the spring and summer campaign. Uh, they'll be hitting the airwaves uh, really soon as we try to bring visitors back to Saratoga County. Um, we're meeting regularly with uh, the leaders of SPAC, Live Nation, Naira, Skidmore, the U.S. Navy, um, a, a whole host of civic institutions is what we call them in an effort to try to be helpful to them. We recognize that uh, they're going to help propel us out of this um, economic uh, situation that we're in right now. And we need them to be successful for all of our small businesses to be successful. So we're trying to do our best to collaborate with them. The county was uh, kind enough to meet with them uh, two weeks ago. Supervisor Gaston did to talk about uh, COVID issues, vaccines and testing uh, that might be required at some of their events this summer. And, and so we're having a great dialogue there. And Saratoga Hospital has been unbelievably helpful to us as well. So we wanna thank them for that. Uh, we're still at the chamber doing relentless communication. We're not sending you a, an email every day like we were last March, but we are sending out regular emails trying to keep you updated um, on the things that are happening at the federal, state, county, local level, as well as what we're doing here at the chamber. 
as well as numbers in terms of COVID and, and vaccinations. So we hope you're finding that information helpful. Our open rates are higher than ever. We had over 500,000 emails opened last year, which is an unbelievable number. That's four times the number of emails we sent out the year before. So uh, again, the open rates have, has been uh, phenomenal. We, we are working with Saratoga Hospital and others on an I Got the Shot campaign. The reality is it's our number one goal this year at the chamber is to get enough shots in arms so that we can open up at 100%. That's our only way to safely reopen uh, fully. And so we need people to get their shots. And we realize it's been a little confusing, a little hard at times. I want everyone to know that the county has done absolutely everything they can to get shots in arms. If they were given more doses, they'd be putting more shots in people's arms. So it's just a matter of getting New York State uh, to be more collaborative with local leaders, and hopefully that will happen at some point. Our Save Our Locals campaign continues. We've been uh, all over the airwaves, all over social media, uh, boosting posts to try to help local businesses. We're still doing that. Saving Our Locals is a critical thing for us this year. We also continue amazing collaborations. Starting last March, the leaders of the Chamber, Discover Saratoga, the Saratoga Springs City Center, uh, the DBA, uh, Skidmore um, and the Saratoga, Saratoga County Prosperity Partnership, our leaders have met every single week in person for the last year to collaborate and coordinate all of the things you've seen us do. Uh, it's been unprecedented collaboration and I wanna thank all of those organizations and all of those leaders for continuing to do that. And lastly, I'll end with, we also started our board did, Skip, Skip helped lead this effort along with Kevin Headley last year. When the pandemic hit, we said we would help everyone. Didn't matter if you were a member or not. If you were in Saratoga County and you were a business or you were a nonprofit organization, an impact sector organization, a public agency, we were gonna help if we could. We continue to do that and we're gonna do that until we're 100% open. So that's the state of the uh, county from a chamber perspective. Um, what I wanna do now is turn it over to the chairman, Todd Kuzniers, supervisor from Moreau, uh, who's gonna offer some uh, comments to get us started. One, one quick note, uh, we do have everybody on mute. If you have a question, what we'd love to have you do is write that question in the chat. And I will try to, after the presentations, manage uh, asking those questions as opposed to people coming in and out of being muted. So uh, Chairman, would you like to uh, comment? Sure, absolutely. Good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you, Todd and Skip, uh, for your remarks uh, up front uh, this morning. On behalf of uh, Saratoga County Administrator Steve Bolger and myself, I would like to thank uh, you, Todd, and the Saratoga County Chamber of Commerce for the invitation to be with you all uh, this morning. Uh, I would also like to thank each and uh, every one of you, uh, our business members in the, in the county, for your resilience, your toughness and the sacrifices that you have made during this exceptionally difficult past year. Uh, and we all have uh, learned to live with uh, and operate our businesses within uh, the confines of the restrictions of uh, COVID. Uh, as the owner of a small business myself, uh, I understand the devastating economic impact that controlling the spread of COVID-19 has had on the bottom line of many businesses. Uh, Recognizing that, I'm very much looking forward to seeing the reopening of Saratoga County back to the hustling, bustling, uh, thriving business climate that we had pre-COVID over a year ago. Uh, when I was elected uh, chairman of the Board of Supervisors back in January, uh, I committed to making Saratoga County's response uh, to the COVID pandemic crisis priority number one. And I was also keenly aware that assisting our businesses had to be a component of our response. So working with my colleagues on the Board of Supervisors and the county's uh, public health department under the direction of Dr. Uh, Daniel Cools, we have accomplished a great deal, especially in our vaccination uh, efforts. I can tell you, and testing efforts. I can tell you as of this moment today, um, we continue to be uh, well below the state average in our seven-day rolling uh, uh, average positivity rate. 
Uh, there was a little bump up. We're seeing that across the state. Uh, we're at 2.8%. Uh, the numbers that came out this morning uh, statewide are 4.7%. Uh, so our county health department is doing an excellent job in, in that area. Uh, and uh, with the total number of confirmed cases in the county to date, uh, we're presently at just under 12,900. Uh, the number of active cases presently stands at 317. And the number of COVID associated hospitalizations of our county residents is presently at 17. Uh, the good news is the number of recovered cases is uh, uh, just under 12,500. Uh, unfortunately, we've seen uh, 154 deaths countywide. Um, and you know, referring back to my, my earlier comments about the job that County Public Health Department is doing, we have tested over 38, uh, I'm sorry, 389,000 individuals throughout the county. Now, if you look closely at Saratoga County's vaccination efforts, uh, as I indicated, we're both ahead of the state and national averages. I can tell you that uh, over 72,000 of the county residents have received at least one dose of the vaccine. That represents approximately just over 31% uh, of the residents in the county. Uh, you compare that to the state average, that the state average is 26% and the U.S. average is 24%. So Saratoga County continues to lead in our vaccination efforts. Uh, and then if you follow that up with the, uh, those that we classify as um, uh, series complete, uh, we have uh, ensured that uh, 38,000 of our 38,000 individuals uh, in the county have received uh, that. Uh, designation, which equates to uh, just over 16.5% of the county residents. Again, comparing that to New York State, 13.4%, and the U.S. at 13.5%, we continue to lead in that area. Uh, most importantly, uh, if you focus on our senior uh, population, which has been a critical uh, component of our COVID-19 response efforts, those uh, individuals 65 years of age and older, uh, we have vaccinated uh, over 30,000 of them. Uh, and that's 6.85% uh, of our seniors have received at least one dose. Uh, and then the individuals that are series complete uh, is another 16,000. And that's over 38.5% of our seniors. So uh, again, the, the county is doing all we can to uh, ensure the safety and vaccination of our most uh, vulnerable population. Uh, obviously, if we had access to uh, a larger number of vac vaccines, uh, we could do even, even more. But again, we're at the mercy of the state of New York and the federal government. So how did we achieve this, uh, these statistics? Um, the most important thing we did, I feel, is uh, Saratoga County Board of Supervisors hired uh, Dr. Daniel Cools, a, a certified epidemiologist to lead our department. Uh, and I can tell you, I believe that Saratoga County has the only public health department that is led by an epidemiologist uh, across the state. And that's, you know, that's fantastic uh, to our residents, uh, fantastic to uh, the administration because we have somebody with that kind of knowledge in-house uh, assisting in our efforts. Um, we also, uh, uh, last year earmarked over a million dollars in appropriations for our COVID related costs. Um, we purchased a $50,000 Reonix COVID testing machine that is used every single day uh, to assist in testing our residents. Uh, we significantly increased the number of contract tracers uh, and uh, we are performing uh, uh, thousands of, of uh, follow-up calls uh, to the, uh, those, those additional staff uh, individuals. Uh, I can tell you that Saratoga County is not shy about promoting our standing uh, in comparison to the other 62 counties in New York State. We all recognize that Saratoga County offers an excellent quality of life and that other counties can only, that other counties can only dream of. And uh, we have the fastest growing uh, county uh, with a growth rate over six times the average uh, for upstate counties over the past decade. We continue to have the lowest uh, county sales tax rate, while many others have increased theirs. 
and we have the lowest property tax levy of all 62 counties in New York. So, uh, you know, we're not going to rest on our, on our laurels, uh, particularly uh, with the new challenges that the county is facing with COVID-19. Uh, and uh, again, that's why we brought on an expert to run our uh, public health department. Uh, and right out of the gate, uh, Dr. Cools put forward uh, the first in the state a uh, pilot program that allows schools to uh, once again participate in high-risk sports. Um, and it, it is his uh, template that is used by other counties in, in upstate New York. So that's, again, a credit to uh, the level of knowledge that we have uh, in-house here at Saratoga County. Um, as part of that effort to get our, our most vulnerable population vaccinated, uh, we focused on uh, getting our, our seniors vaccinated and Saratoga County wasted no time um, being the first county in the state to work with our local EMS uh, to provide vaccinations for our homebound seniors. Uh, another big focus uh, of uh, county public health uh, included working with BOCES uh, to ensure that teachers and support staff uh, got vaccinated so that schools could open up and parents could go back to work. And uh, we're pleased to report today that uh, over 95% of all teachers and school employees have been vaccinated in Saratoga County. Uh, the county has also partnered with the private sector to create an inbound uh, and outbound call center. Uh, we're utilizing an in-county firm, uh, DIRAD, which uh, has done a phenomenal job in assisting us uh, with getting uh, answers to our residents uh, when, they, when they call a uh, county. Uh, we've also secured uh, the Saratoga City, uh, City Center as a possible mass vaccination site. Uh, and the county has another 18 other sites uh, around the county, uh, all ready to go as uh, pods, uh, should large volumes of the vaccine become available. Uh, we just, as, as I said earlier, need uh, access to more vaccine. So earlier I touched on uh, the fact that uh, these have been challenging times for our, our businesses. Uh, in 2020, we saw the Saratoga County race course and the Racino close the horse racing. We saw SPAC go silent uh, and businesses close their uh, doors all around the county. Uh, we saw county sales tax uh, trail off by 3%. Uh, we saw a 58% decline in the hotel occupancy tax receipts. Uh, all with a devastating trickle down effect on our towns and villages and local businesses. So this year, uh, you know, we, we know early indications are things are uh, uh, showing signs of recovery with sales tax, uh, revenue increasing, and there's some optimism in the hotel occupancy, uh, uh, possibly, uh, you know, certainly doing better than where we were last year. However, Saratoga County understands the need to be proactive in assisting our businesses. So the day after I was elected chairman of the Board of Supervisors, I wrote the governor and called on him to issue an executive order to extend the real property tax deadline uh, with no penalty uh, for our taxpayers. We were the only county in New York State to do so and the only county to receive that executive order uh, that directly impacted uh, uh, the, the cost of uh, uh, taxes and penalties on, on our uh, real property owners. At the last Board of Supervisors meeting, we enacted uh, a local law capping food delivery charges by third party venues at 20%, uh, directly aimed at uh, helping our, our struggling food service uh, and restaurant industry. We've worked with, uh, with uh, uh, to provide uh, PPE supplies through various channels to businesses in the county, uh, including working with uh, Saratoga County IDA and the Clifton Park IDA, who combined have allocated over $900,000 to this effort. Uh, we heard from many local businesses that without this assistance, they would not have been able to reopen or stay open safely. Last month, the county received $6.8 million from the federal government uh, for a renters and landlord uh, relief program. Once we received direction from New York State uh, on uh, the applications and disbursements, we'll get this badly needed financial assistance to renters and landlords as quickly as possible. Uh, most recently, uh, everyone's read uh, that 
Uh, Saratoga County received the potential or has the potential to receive $44 million uh, from the American Rescue Plan uh, that was just signed into law. On top of that, uh, our towns and, and cities are expected to share in another $30 million of direct uh, funding assistance. Uh, at this point, we continue to wait for guidance from U.S. Treasury on, uh, on how and uh, where these funds may be spent. Um, but, you know, I, I mentioned earlier, Saratoga County is well known for many things. We lead uh, in many categories uh, and we're probably most well known for our thoroughbred uh, horse racing, our standard bred racing, gambling at the Racino um, and SPAC with its world class uh, music and dance uh, and Saratoga County uh, and its residents and the business community uh, really hit the jackpot when we when the Board of Supervisors moved to hire Steve Bolger uh, as the next Saratoga County Administrator. Uh, Steve not only brings a wealth of uh, private sector and government experience uh, to the county, he most recently served as the regional administrator for the Atlantic Region 2 and Mid-Atlantic Region 3 uh, in the U.S. Small Business Administration. So uh, I think that sends a message uh, or should send a message to um, the businesses in Saratoga County that we're serious about doing all we can uh, to help them. And with that, I would like to uh, turn it over and introduce uh, Steve Bolger. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, appreciate those comments. Good morning, everybody. Always a pleasure to be uh, with the Chamber, our economic development partners, and certainly the small business community. Um, just two quick comments, because I know there's a lot of questions you're going to have for us. We want to get to those. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to highlight, which I think is, is good uh, for everyone here to know, is the work that our employment and training department is doing in the county right now. They really are our workforce development team uh, at the county. They partner with uh, all the other counties around here. But uh, our director, uh, Jennifer McCluskey, who's actually on the call today, uh, we had a great meeting this week and she filled me in on a lot of the initiatives that are out there. There is additional funding coming in from the federal government uh, as part of the pandemic response, which is only going to enhance these programs. But there, one thing I would encourage is we have a lot of programs uh, and you can find out about those at our website, our Saratoga County NY.gov website uh, at our employment and training department. They can take you through a lot of the information. One of the interesting things uh, I learned is that we have this uh, metrics e-learning program now, this is a free platform for employers or for job seekers, and it offers up to 6,000 different courses and certifications. And if you're a small business owner, for example, you can actually set up, work with that, uh, that group and set up a, a series of trainings that any new employee would have to have that is specific to a job that they're going to fill in your company. So it's a, it's a free platform because one of the things that I certainly heard all the last three years at the SBA, and, and I know it's the biggest issue facing our small businesses, is the challenge in finding and hiring qualified candidates, even people willing and ready to work. It's a huge challenge. We know that a, a lot of small businesses, especially with the pandemic, uh, are still struggling with that. Uh, we have the unemployment issue, which a lot of people are, at least some people are choosing to stay on unemployment because the benefits are so good versus coming back to work. So we want to be as helpful as possible in helping uh, our small business community solve those challenges as well. And, and that's a good place to start. And then the last comment I'll just make gets back to actually what Skip Carlson said. It, it made me uh, laugh a little bit. I was walking around. I was in one of my uh, uh, county's departments the other day, and someone had a sign, almost like a bumper sticker, uh, on their desk, which paraphrased uh, President Kennedy's famous speech, ask not what your county can do for you, ask what you can do for your county. And uh, I thought that was pretty clever. And so to Skip's point, I think uh, and, and reinforcing what Chairman Kuznir said, 
the biggest challenge we have uh, is trying to get as many people vaccinated as quickly as possible. Because with that, the more people are vaccinated, the more confidence will return to everybody to go out, start spending money, get back to their uh, lives again, open up more venues, uh, things like that, it in just increase the traffic, the foot traffic on the streets and getting people back to work. So if I can ask, and, and Chairman Kuzniers and I can ask for one thing from the business community and our economic development partners is just to encourage that. Uh, have your employees get vaccinated, have as many, encourage your customers to get vaccinated. There is still some vaccine reluctance by a declining percentage, but it's still out there. So we wanna make sure, uh, and we think that's the fastest way that will get our economy going again is to get more people vaccinated. So, so with that, um, uh, Todd uh, Shimkus, I'll turn it back over to you if you wanna open it up for questions for uh, the chairman and myself. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Todd, could, could I interject just uh, briefly at the, at the top of our of your program, uh, Skip asked a very good question. Uh, you know, what what can the business community do to make our jobs here at the county easier? And uh, I think probably first and foremost um, is direct communication uh, with uh, the county, uh, with the local supervisors from businesses. You know, we, we hear, uh, you know, the old adage is certainly true that the, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Uh, but in order to make good public policy, uh, we need to know that what we're working on is, is the of prime concern, uh, particularly when it's related to business issues, our businesses in the county. And the best way that we can put forward good public policy is to have a direct line of communication, either reaching out directly with a county administrator or reaching out directly with myself or reaching out to the supervisor in our respective towns so that uh, those concerns or ideas uh, get elevated to the level where the county can take action on that to uh, you know, directly assist our businesses. So I, I just wanted to answer that question, uh, certainly because it's coming from your, your leader, Skip, and uh, before you opened it up to uh, everyone else. So thank you, Todd. Oh, oh believe me, I was going to make sure we, we touched on the <laughs> chairman of the board's uh, question first. So, <laughs> um, so just as a reminder to everyone, um, if, if you have a question, it's going to be easier for us if you just write it into the chat and then I'll, I'll read the questions and we'll go, we'll go through them that way. Um, I did have a couple of people that texted me as well. So I'll, I'll try to get to all of these. I, I did want to acknowledge, um, Skip mentioned that Assemblywoman Carrie Warner is with us, but I also see that uh, State Senator Daphne Jordan is with us as well. So I wanna thank uh, the Senator for joining us this morning. Um, and so the, the first question that came up on the chat uh, from Maria at Saratoga Plan uh, is during the pandemic, the popularity and importance of open spaces emerged as a lifeline for county residents. I'm gonna to try to paraphrase a little bit. We anticipate visitation to trails, uh, paddling launches, parks, preserves, and other open spaces to accelerate. Honestly, I can tell you from the chamber side, that's gonna be a big part of our push this summer, outdoor spaces in, 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 but pe that people could use when, when they come here. Uh, this creates more pressure and impacts on these resources, requiring more vigilance and stewardship to maintain quality of places and experiences. Using the federal stimulus funding and loosening of state funding, uh, would you speak to the possibility of creating a program to expand, build, and maintain our public outdoor recreation spaces? So important for quality of life, public health, and economic prosperity. Very good question. And uh, I can tell you that uh, from, from the town of Moreau, I, I, saw, I see it firsthand how uh, critical and what a vital role played. Uh, we never closed our recreation uh, facilities. And we have seen uh, probably the most use uh, of our rec park and our walking and hiking and multi-use trails than we've ever seen in the history of the town. Taking that information and knowing that that's a priority, 
uh, we created uh, right out of the gate uh, at our organizational meeting, a new committee at the county, a uh, new trails committee, dedicated to uh, taking a look at all those issues, presenting uh, ideas up the chain for full board review. Um, they've been very active. Um, and I know that, um, you know, assisting in those types of endeavor, endeavors uh, will be a priority through this year and into next year and, and, and beyond uh, in getting those types of projects uh, uh, constructed and up and running and expanded. Great. So the next question is, can you speak to the most recent stimulus package and its impact on Saratoga County? Uh, I might share this with Steve, but uh, yeah, so uh, we we know that uh, it's estimated that Saratoga County will just get over uh, $44.5 million. Um, uh, my understanding, and we're still getting direction from the feds on this, is that, uh, you know, half that money uh, will have to be spent. In other words, you can't put it in an escrow or a, a real property tax abatement account for a rainy day or anything like that. And then uh, that would be half of that amount, uh, approximately $21 million. Uh, so uh, the county uh, will be looking, you know, once we have direction on how we can spend that money, we will spend that money. Uh, and uh, we'll put it toward uh, those types of investments where we can leverage outside funding where we can. Uh, but that's not to say that uh, the county won't completely fund uh, were the projects uh, around uh, Saratoga County. Great. So the next one, this is a I didn't know if Steve, I didn't know if Steve wanted to add to that. I would just say no, you, you covered it well. Uh, yeah, uh, right now, as the chairman mentioned, we have to wait for the Department of Treasury. Uh, my experience dealing with them last year on the PPP program, because they're the ones who really came out with the guidance and ran that program, is it takes time. Uh, they've got 60 days from when the bill was enacted on, and signed by President Biden on March 11th uh, to actually uh, get the money out. So I would, my anticipation is the guidance and and how much we're going to get and the, and the actual allocation will be closer to, to 60 days than, than now. Uh, so we just got to wait and see. And we'll be ready uh, to execute whatever it is the Board of Supervisors uh, decides to do with that money once we get notified. I, I, I should point out last year, Steve, I don't know if I ever told you this, you had my favorite quote of the year that I used repeatedly. It was the, the night before uh, the PPP loans could be filed. And Steve at the time working for the SBA was on a conference call that uh, Congresswoman Stefanik had put together with local bankers who were freaking out because they still didn't have the rules. And Steve's line, which I think pretty much captured the entire year last year for everyone was, we're flying the plane while building it. And <laughs> I've used that over and over again and I never told you that. so. Um, so the, the, uh, the next question is, do individuals who have been diagnosed with COVID over the past year still need to get the vaccine? Uh, my, under, uh, my understanding is uh, yes. Um, in talking with uh, Dr. Cools, even though uh, you've uh, either uh, been positive with symptoms or positive with no symptoms, uh, you still need to be vaccinated. So right on top of that, um, do you ever see employers having the ability to require employees to be vaccinated as a condition of employment? Uh, so uh, my position on that, and I don't think that, um, you know, at least at the county level, uh, we can mandate that. Uh, I, I don't support uh, mandatory vaccinations. Um, you know, obviously, uh, I would encourage, uh, uh, you know, any individual to get vaccinated. And I know businesses, in order for them to be successful and, and to thrive in this environment, need to be able to have that level of safety, not only for the employees, but uh, for their customers. Um, but at the end of the day, um, I would not support mandating uh, vaccines, vaccination. 
So uh, another question I just got texted is what what's the status of county operations? Are you fully open? Um, how what, what's what's each of the for each of the departments? Yeah, I'll let Steve uh, handle that question. Yeah, we we are fully open. We've been open uh, for quite some time now. All all our departments are fully operational, fully staffed, and and uh, so yeah. Everything is uh, everything is rolling along here at the county. And I, I think um, so. The, the somebody just texted. What about meetings? Can people attend the hearings in the um, in, in the supervisor's room? So yes, uh, the public can attend, uh, but we are still limited. Uh, we have to maintain our uh, social distancing requirements. And things like that. I mean, we've had we've already had public hearings, um, and you know, customarily we we've accepted written comment, um, and uh, we as the matrix has changed, uh, and we can allow a greater number of the, the public in. Uh, we're certainly going to do that. Arts and sports venues can have live attendees at present, uh, provided they prove vaccination or a negative COVID test. How much do you think this will inhibit advanced hotel and event ticket bookings? And maybe I'll add on top of that, do you think there's um, the, the county is, uh, chairman, Mr. Chairman, as you said earlier, uh, put out a policy for school sports that everybody else copied. Is there any chance that county public health could do the same for SPAC or the track or other outdoor venues this summer? Yeah, I can't, I don't want to speak uh, directly. Uh, that's a question for our public health commissioner. Uh, but I can tell you that, um, you know, he, he is lockstep with the Board of Supervisors as far as doing all we can to, you know, uh, uh, increase uh, access to these venues uh, to get uh, more uh, students involved in, in sporting events uh, all across the board. Uh, but again, he has to follow um, the directives that are coming, coming from New York State Department of Health. Uh, and there are instances where he and the Board of Supervisors would love to take an additional step uh, to open things up, but his hands are tied. He can't legally do that. Uh, so, you know, to answer that specific question uh, without the doctor here, I, would be uh, probably improper for me to do that. But I can tell you that uh, and affirm that, uh, you know, Dr. Cool is, is doing everything that he can within the confines of the directives from uh, the state uh, to continue to open things up. Great. So um, what do you hope the county accomplishes by the end of the year? What can you talk about goals that the, the two of you might have? Well, in a, in a perfect world, I'd like to see Saratoga County uh, operate as it was prior to COVID-19. That's my goal. <laughs> Steve? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're looking, uh, yeah, obviously that's the number one goal is to just get everything open and everybody back and, and just a more of a feeling of normalcy. That will be we can get that done. That's a, a win for everyone. And, and it's our primary focus for all our county efforts. Um, but there are some things we're looking to do. Uh, we're taking a look at some uh, infrastructure uh, ideas here uh, within the, the county government. Uh, uh, for example, we're looking at updating our records management uh, systems. And but it, so that's something that we're, we're looking at, along with some other internal projects. But then the, the other thing I think uh, that we're trying to encourage, and this is something that uh, working with our towns and, and also uh, our state representatives and our federal representatives, is there is the potential for some real infrastructure money to come down from DC, possibly from uh, the state or funnel through the state as the year goes on. So that's something we're also looking at. Uh, and by infrastructure, that's writ large. And not only is it water, sewer and roads, but especially broadband. Uh, a lot of our uh, smaller towns uh, in the western, northwestern part of the uh, county 
really need uh, access to high-speed broadband. So we're hopeful that uh, that will happen later this year, and we are focused on developing those plans now. So I just got another, you, you mentioned, I guess somebody didn't hear it, and I, I don't know that I wrote it down. You mentioned something about the vaccination of educators. Can you uh, update everyone on that? I know you mentioned it earlier, but somebody must have missed so, it. So yeah, I, uh, in my remarks, I, I did mention that, uh, you know, Saratoga County Public Health uh, uh, has been, uh, has made it a priority uh, to ensure that uh, all the teachers and support staff of the schools in Saratoga County get vaccinated. And uh, to date, we have uh, accomplished 95% of those individuals getting vaccinated. Um, and uh, we still have a little ways to go, but that, that's a, a testament to the, uh, the excellent job uh, public health is doing uh, toward that goal. So I, I, I just got another text. Uh, what, what about county, county personnel? What's the vaccination rate there? Um, the, I guess that's the question. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I don't have a percentage, maybe Steve does, but I know that uh, everybody, as the uh, matrices changed and uh, uh, public facing individuals and municipalities were became eligible. I, I know in my town, uh, uh, everybody uh, at town hall is either vaccinated or uh, has an appointment. Uh, at the county level, I'm not aware of what the numbers are. Are you aware, Steve, of what that number may be? Yeah, we, we don't have it because it's literally changing every day. Uh, the uh, governor really opened it up widely for municipal government employees only in the last couple of weeks. So we've uh, there's been a real surge. We did have people prior to that getting vaccinated. There's also some who have gotten vaccinated from uh, just other, either they had comorbidities or they fell into the senior category. So I, I don't have an exact number of county employees vaccinated yet, but it is, uh, it's growing rapidly. And, you know, in, in partnering with our public health team, uh, we feel confident that any county employee and municipal employee as well, we're moving towards, uh, you know, getting them vaccinated as quickly as possible. You know, last year, I, I chuckle at this every time I think about it. The, one of the first things we did at the chamber is we sent out an email to everyone in our database, some 10,000 people. And as part of it, I said, call me and I put my cell phone on there. So um, that's why I'm getting all these text messages. I've got 10,000 people out there that have my cell phone. Um, so the, <laughs> anyways, um, the, the next question is um, about the city center. Um, and when, when you think that, and I know you may, you may have addressed that earlier too, but when you think that might be open for mass vaccinations? Yeah, so, you know, we're ready to go at a moment's notice. Um, it, it all comes back to the, the same challenge uh, everyone is facing, uh, availability of the vaccine. I mean, if, if, we get, if we're told we're gonna get a dose of 200, it's not really cost effective to have a mass vaccination site open up for, you know, that would be gone in no time, you know, an hour or so. Um, however, uh, we are prepared uh, and we have the ability uh, to uh, turnkey that, if you will, uh, to get the vaccine directly in arms immediately. Uh, but again, uh, that can't happen without, without access to mass doses of the vaccine. Great. So does anyone else have uh, a question that they'd like to put in the, in the chat box? If I, if I don't see any and I don't get another text message, I, I think what I'd like to do is uh, offer, uh, oh, here we are. What kind of funding or assistance can the county offer to restaurants and hospitality businesses who are struggling to reopen profitably with minimum seating capacity limits? Uh, well, uh, I can tell you last year, the Board of Supervisors uh, put forward a resolution assisting with the uh, cost of uh, businesses and property owners that 
where um, on the county sewer system, I think uh, that proposal was to uh, reduce the rate by 50%. Uh, I don't know what the impact that had countywide. Steve, do you know any numbers on that? I'm not yeah, aware of. Yeah, there, there was, you know, it did generate, uh, uh, I think it was a, a close to a million dollars worth of savings for, for some restaurants that were on the system. So, so that did take place. Uh, the county, we really don't have any direct county funding to business, uh, uh, you know, directly to businesses. We're, you know, we rely like everybody else on the federal programs, on any state programs. Uh, so there's really no direct funding that we can provide to businesses. I think it's more important what we're trying to do is do everything else that we can to support businesses to keep your costs low uh, through the lower taxes, through you know keeping keeping uh, the best business environment we can. That's how we see our role as supporting uh, as many businesses as possible is to provide the best business environment that we can. But we really don't have any direct programs uh, as of yet uh, for that. And I, and I think that if I could add to that, I think you know that's why you see uh, the federal government stepping in with you know these big numbers of uh, funding assistance for uh, you know the states, uh, the counties, and the individual uh, municipalities uh, because uh, there's a recognition that. Um, our businesses and, and others need this assistance uh, after what we've been through for the past year. And and Todd, because uh, I'd, like, I'd like to also add to that, just to give everybody a sense, because I'm not sure these numbers are out there, but, but last year with the PPP program for small businesses in Saratoga County, there was over $300 million in forgivable loans provided uh, to I think it was 3,400 companies that supported 32,000 jobs across the county. Now with this latest round of PPP, they haven't released uh, the county breakdowns yet, but my understanding is uh, we, we think based on percentages, it's at least another 75 to $100 million is coming in to small businesses across the county and also some nonprofits as well, uh, thank, thankfully this time. Uh, so just to give a sense of what the bigger effort has been to get funding to our small business. Yeah, it, Steve, I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, we Saratoga County last year with PPP loans outpaced every other county in the region in terms of the number of PPP loans that were uh, provided and approved within, within Saratoga County by all of our local banks who, who participated uh, so extraordinarily with the SBA and the Treasury. So... Thank you for all of your efforts back then to make that happen and to all the banks out there that gave out all that money too so quickly. So I remember their staffs were working seven days a week, 24 hours a day nearly to file, to file all of those. So, um, so the, the next question that came in is, do you foresee community pools to open along with summer programs for children? Um, that's a good question. Um, and again, we'll be solely reliant on the state guidance on that. If, if the uh, state issues uh, guidance that uh, allows a, a matrix that can be put in place, uh, I know that, uh, like I have a spray park in the town of Moreau, I know that uh, we will have it up and running, uh, and I'm sure other supervisors are anxious to, uh, if they have pools in their community, to get them uh, available as soon as possible. But again, that'll be that'll be directly related to the direction we get from the state. Great. So, are IDA funds still available for recouping PPE costs? Um. Uh, Do you know, Steve? Yes, I, I'm pretty sure they are. I was just talking to Rod Sutton, uh, County IDA chairman, and they just, uh, I think they've, uh, they just appropriated another $250,000 last month or, or, or in late January. There still is that money uh, available. So I would reach out to the Saratoga County IDA, go to their website, and you can apply for those PPE funds. I do believe they have some money available. 
Yeah, it's it's super easy. They they it's a simple application, and it is a reimbursement uh, grant for PPE expenses. I know we got a question last week from someone about it whether they uh, restaurants that had purchased equipment to do outside patios whether that was covered. And Rod got right back to me and said that's not. It is PPE solely. That's uh, under the uh, either the state law or the executive order that authorized IDAs to do that. So. Uh, we're, we're just past uh, 9.30. I, 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 I want to thank both of you for doing this again, I'd, but I'd love to give you a sort of that, you know, last minute, what, uh, any final remarks that you'd like, to, uh, you'd like to share with us? Yeah, thank you, uh, Todd. Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I just have to thank uh, all the businesses uh, around the county for, you know, again, as I mentioned at the top of the program, um, everything they have done to keep their employees, you know, on the payroll, everything they've done to maintain services to uh, our residents. Um, you know, there has never, in the history of Saratoga County, there's never been these types of challenges that uh, as we have faced uh, um, last year and, and we continue to face to some degree. Uh, and uh, I just I just uh, wanna thank them for uh, continuing to remain in Saratoga County, uh, continuing to be a part of our community uh, and the fabric of uh, what makes Saratoga County great. So thank you for that. Steve? Yeah, I would just say, I would certainly echo what Chairman Kuzniers just said is a huge thank you. We know how tough it's been. But I would also say we have a great future ahead. We're going to get through this, you know, whether it's by the summer, by the fall, whenever it is. And this county is poised to continue the great growth. And that is so importantly driven by all of the businesses here. So anything we can do at the county, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us or any of our departments. We value the business community uh, greatly, and we want to support all the initiatives that we can and just set the conditions so you can thrive and prosper in all the different things you're doing in support of your customers, your employees, and your own family. So thank you. Awesome. So I just want to say thank you to everyone for being with us this morning. And uh, uh, just as the, the chairman and, and the county administrator said, if there's anything that the county can do, reach out. Uh, if there's anything the chamber can do to help you, please reach out to us as well. That's what we're here for. We want to help everyone to succeed, grow, and thrive as we try to get through this, this pandemic. So again, thank you all for attending and have a great, beautiful day out there. Thank you, Tom. Thank you.